home. It's so good to be with you here on the back porch. In these crazy, difficult times, when the world is turned upside down, I want you to have hope. I want you to be encouraged. And what I've done is I've combined all four Gospels and looked at how did Jesus handle difficulty, chaos, trouble, and trials. How did he handle that, especially in the last 18 hours of his life? We've seen that he ate with others, and we shouldn't be isolated or alone. We need to spend some time with others. He worshiped, and we need to worship God. He prayed, and we need to pray. And the fourth thing I want you to notice about Jesus' life from the Gospels is found in Matthew chapter 14, beginning in verse 27. And Jesus says this to all the apostles, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And then in verse 30, specifically speaking to Peter, he says, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Well, what is Jesus doing in these verses? Jesus is prophesying. He's letting others know what is to come. Now, prophecy is in its biblical definition, is not just foretelling what is to come, although that's what Jesus was doing here. It is also boldly foretelling the Word of God. It is foretelling the Word of God. And so here's what the, the principle that we need to glean from this. What we need to learn as disciples of the Lord Jesus is when we are going through difficult times, when our world is turned upside down, when we're going through trials and troubles, we need to be able to prophesy. What am I saying there? I'm saying we need to boldly foretell the word of God in the most difficult seasons of life. When you lose a loved one, when your life is falling apart, when you hear the words cancer, or when your marriage is in trouble, when you lose your job, or just when life is hard, we are to be like Jesus and foretell the word of God. In other words, we are to proclaim our faith in God in the midst of trouble. Now, Jesus always knew what was going to happen, and he knew how to respond. But as a believer, we can say, I will trust in the Lord, and I know he will bring me through this. That's part of prophecy having that faith to proclaim the not yet, what God is going to do. I, I'll give you an example. One of our members recently was dying. And as she was dying and I was visiting her, she said to me, I love you, Pastor, and I'll see you again. And I responded by saying, I love you too, and we will see each other again. That's boldly forthtelling our faith by the word of God. See, you can claim the promises of the not yet as a believer in Christ Jesus. You can claim the promise of salvation, the promise of forgiveness, the promise of cleansing, the promise of eternal life, the promise of heaven. All of these are your promises to claim, even the promise of your heavenly home, your mansion that's not ready yet. Now, some of you need to prophesy even more boldly than that. You need to proclaim and boldly foretell your relatives, your friends, that they need to repent and ask Jesus as their Savior because you want to see them in heaven one day. You need to be able to share with them how important it is that they would be with you. Just like Jesus was prophesying, you need to be able to do the same. You need to know your life is short, and many of you, your time is short. And when you go through trials, people will listen to you. Your words are more weightier. They count more. In those moments, you boldly foretell your faith in Jesus Christ. Foretell and boldly proclaim that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and that they need to have Jesus as their Savior as well. Today, be like Jesus 
and you also boldly share your faith.